Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into tonight's coverage of men's basketball here on ESPN+. Plus. We're coming to you live from the Templeton Center here in Clinton, South Carolina for tonight's matchup between Florida A&M and Presbyterian College. I'm Alex Smith. Joining me is Ken Blankenship, and it should be a lot of fun here tonight as we'll take a look at a couple of players to watch in tonight's game. We'll start with the visiting Rattlers, their leading scorer, Keith Lamar, the 6'5 wing player, does a little bit of everything. Yeah, he really does, Alex. You know, it's a, they've had a tough year already because they've played so many large Power 5 schools. But uh, don't tell Keith Lamar that because he's going to bring it tonight along with his teammates, try to get a win here on the road against Presbyterian. As for Presbyterian, their leading scorer is guard Samaj Teal. Over 13 points a game for PC, an absolutely lethal shooter, over 53% from behind the arc on the year. I love the way this kid approaches the game. He approaches it with that aggressive mentality, and he, you know, he's always looking to get that advantage, whether it's in transition, the half court, or whatever. Turn your defense into offense, and when you get an opportunity, get those good looks and knock them down, that's what he does. So we're just a few moments away from the opening tip tonight between Presbyterian College and Florida A&M. A&M still looking for their first win on the season. Uh, but you look at the schedule, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, the teams that they have played, it, it's a brutal start to the season. And, and it's hard to really gauge where this team is when you look at what they're going to do in conference play. Yeah, Alex, I, I'm telling you, as they were being introduced to get on the floor, I was surprised about how many big athletes were left on the bench. They start a small lineup, they really do. And when I see that, I know they're gonna get after you, you know, and uh, they'll have to match the intensity because Presbyterian does a very good job of doing that as well. Yeah, Presbyterian under their head coach, Quentin Farrell, already six and three this year. They had five total wins a season ago, so the program appears to be trending in the right direction. And they'll look to uh, get one here at home against Florida A&M. We're just about set for the opening tip. Shannon Grant, the six foot 10, 300 pound senior, jumping center against Jonah Pierce for Presbyterian. And we are underway. And the Rattlers have the opening possession. KJ Parker, the point guard, to work it up court. He struggled shooting the basketball, but he does a great job getting his teammates involved as A&M works it around the perimeter. This perimeter defense for Presbyterian has been their calling card here early in the season, forcing teams into tough jump shots. And here's a three on the way for A&M. It bounces around and Pierce grabs the rebound and quickly teal back the other way. Blue Hose working around the perimeter, now all the way back out to teal. You know, good shooting cures a lot of woes, and Presbyterian has some good shooters that they've started tonight. Barnett's little good shovel intentions, pass. Yeah, yeah, good intentions. Not very good execution on that one for Barnett. They've been getting Pierce involved in the offense. He's had three straight games in double figures. And the big fella working down low. Nice move, and Grant puts it up and in. Yeah, Grant's the one exception to that small starting lineup. Beef in the middle. Got good length too, but mainly that beef and utilized it well there. Two nothing Rattlers lead. As the Blue Hose working around outside again. Here's Parrish, jumper on the way. And a battle for the rebound and the Rattlers have it. Yeah, good Louis contest. John. Good contest by the Rattlers there. Early dump down, Alex, get paint touches when you can. Long three off the mark, out of bounds, back to the Blue Hose. Yeah, number 12 in white for Presbyterian Parish is a kid who can really shoot the basketball. You know, I just mentioned that shooting the basketball well cures a lot of woes, and it'll get you a lot of playing time as long as you're guarding on the other end, and I think he fits both. There's Barnett. He's already got one Big South player of the week under his belt this year. Great pass. And Pierce able to finish. Beautiful setup that time. Nice execution for PC, and they yeah, tie it up at yeah. two. Teal shows you that he's more than just a scorer. What a great delivery. On time. Louis Jean picks up his dribble. See and the, back out to Parker. See the defensive pressure on the perimeter, just like you mentioned, Alex. They go back inside. And nice footwork again, Shannon Grant. 
for early it points. Just can't let a kid that big catch it that deep. They got to do a better job. Force him, make him catch it from six or eight feet as opposed to two. And the floater from Paris off the mark. Louis Jean in transition and pass off the mark looking for Parker. Miscommunication. Parker was looking for the chest pass. Louis Jean was looking for the lob. And out of bounds back to the blue hose. Yeah, Trayvon Reddish Roan looking to take a charge there. The Rattler player did a good job of avoiding it. Then he turned the ball over. Should have been an easy bucket. Playing somebody else's building in D1 basketball, you better execute those types of plays that you should, you know, to try to get a win on the road. As Teal breaks the timeline, coming up on three minutes going by here in the first half. And the Blue Hose trying to get something going offensively. They kick it out, now they swing it to Barnett. And his shot wow. is short. And we got a whistle and a foul on the rebound. That'd be on the big guy, maybe. No, no, number two. Foul on number two, Jordan Chapman. So Chapman, Chapman yep. for AM, his first foul, first team foul. Twenty on the shot clock after the whistle, and Teal fires a three. And he gets oh, the wow. roll. That shooter's yeah, touch. How about that? Love to see that if you're uh, Teal on that one. Blue Hose on top, five to four. Parker quickly back the other way. AM has been able to get it inside here in the early going. PC has settled for some jump shots. And here's Grant again working. And great footwork again, Shannon Grant using that big body to get position. Absolutely. That time the Blue yeah. Hose did a better job. He caught it when more out towards the free throw exactly. line and just worked his way down. Right. Got to cut him off. Nice spin move by the big guy. And the finish. And a miscommunication there by the Blue Hose. Errant pass gives it back to A&M. In the game for the Blue Hose, Caleb Scott checks in. I love, love players that wear the face mask. Yeah. It's the intimidation yeah. factor. That's I love right. everything about it. That's right. Here come the Rattlers once again. Parker will set up the offense. And here's Lamar, lob inside. A good defense that time by Caleb Scott. Barnett now pushing it up court. Tries to get it down low to Scott. It's off the mark, out of bounds, back over to Florida A&M, and that'll bring us to our first media timeout. Florida A&M with a one-point lead, 6-5. to five. Both teams a little choppy here in the early going. We'll see if we clean it up. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more men's basketball right here on ESPN+. .com to learn more or to search our exciting career opportunities. And welcome back, everybody. Six to five, Florida A&M on top. Early first half action here in Clinton, South Carolina as they take on the Presbyterian College Blue Hose. And Ken, one of the things that jumped out to me on the box score already, eight trips on offense for Presbyterian, three turnovers. A&M has turned those three turnovers into six points. Yep, that's, that's key. You gotta do those things on the road to win a game. It's very tough to win on the road. And uh, this, this team is, as we mentioned, as you mentioned earlier, has played some big Power 5 uh, programs early here in the year and uh, have not gotten a win yet. But um, look, man, I, I was a little bit surprised they hadn't been more competitive because they have some impressive looking athletes. So this is a golden opportunity tonight, but you have to do those things. You have to turn those turnovers into points. And they, so far they have. And Rattlers basketball. Just under 16 minutes to go here in the opening half. As they work it around outside, trying to get it inside, it's cut off by Scott. As Grant has checked out, so we'll see where A&M goes on offense. They kick it out for a corner three. Got a good look. And the hustle rebound chased down by Barnett, quickly up to Teal. We'll see if Presbyterian can get to the paint. And Teal on the baseline drive has it knocked away. So the Blue Hose will reset with 22 on the shot clock. And 
Barnett kicks it out. Kobe Stewart with a corner three. Good find, good deliver, selfless basketball. Barnett surveyed the situation, made the quick decision, and the quick pitch over, and then the knockdown. First made three of the night for either team. And the Blue Hose with a two-point lead. Bettis gets a high ball screen. Nice job, Barnett, getting around it. And Rattler's baseline drive. Tough shot. Can't get it to go. Reddish Roan with the rebound. It's going to take it all the way. And the offensive foul. Nice job by the defender getting to the spot, setting his feet. Yeah, and I thought it was a good call by the ref, too. Reddish Roan seemed to have his mind made up in the entire way down the court. Should have probed a little bit more, tried to find something else. Kind of had his mind made up. Got the charge and gets taken out of the game. So another turnover for the Blue Hose, now four already. Jamari Harvey enters the game for Presbyterians. There's Parker to set up the offense for the Rattlers. And now they work it back out top. Another screen, Blue Hose double team out of it. Lamar long pass to the opposite corner, five on the shot clock. And a contested jumper is up and in. And that's Love Bettis into the scoring column. If you're Presbyterian, you can live with that. I don't think he's going to make a whole bunch of those. Nice shot, and I may be wrong, but a contested shot from about 16. Contest wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible either. Bettis just made a nice shot. All tied up at eight. 14.04 to go here in the first half. Just one team foul on each team. Nobody in any kind of foul trouble at the moment. I think we may have like some blood on the hand of Barnett or something, maybe a small cut. Yeah, it may there. have been scratched. Yeah, something, something Somebody of that Somebody going nature. after the yep. ball. Right, ready to go now, I believe. you got Barnett and Teal in your backcourt, things are in pretty good shape, no question. Two very good guards. Yeah, the Blue Hose can put multiple guys on the court that can handle the basketball. There's Barnett to Teal. Oh, nice cross. And great a great block, block by it Eaton was. coming over to help. They try and save it off Teal's leg, but it ends up with the Rattlers anyway. Louis Jean attacking is cut off, nice defense, defense by Harvey. Great find. Sure was, selfless basketball. Nice dribble drive, penetration, gave it up right at the last minute, avoided the charge. Good offense there by the Rattlers. 10-8, a and with the lead. Here's the handoff to Teals, he'll bring it back out top. Good contest. And a shot off the mark, but Kobe Stewart ends up with the loose ball and lays it up and in. Credit that one to Marquise Barnett. Nice tip off the rebound right to his teammate. Credit him with a nice pass. I give him the rebound and the assist there. Here's Lamar out top. Tough, Tough aggressive shot. move Tough there. Shot. He just seemed to hang in the yeah, air on that shot. Right. A little bit of English off the glass as well. 12, highly 10. contested, highly contested. Yeah. We've seen some tough shots Absolutely. fall for a here early. And Stewart fires a three, that one off the mark. Not a real good shot selection on that. Bad trip by PC. Now they go inside, Eatman. And Scott's going to be whistled for the foul. Scott was in good shape. He went up for the contest, and he should have gone straight up vertically instead of breaking his, his uh, arm. And uh, that's why he got the foul call on him. Goes straight up there. He does a good job. Guy probably doesn't hit that. There's that tough shot by the Rattler, number five. How much you can do defensively on a play like that. Yeah. That's right. Other than be as tall as Wimby. I, I don't that's know right. that there's much that's more right. you can really do. Keith Lamar is number five for the Rattlers. He was the one. But at the line. 
got some sweat on the court. Looks like they're wiping it up. Some two free throws coming up for Eatman. Yeah, Demarius, excuse me, Ja Demarius. Birmingham kid. First one rattles home. Eatman just three of six from the free throw line coming into tonight. You know, as a team, Florida A&M, you look at the numbers and, and really nothing jumps out to you very impressive. Only 27% from three on the season, 38% from the floor. But they've come out here tonight and they've made some difficult shots early as Eatman goes one of two. Harvey attacking immediately, hangs. Tough shot. Tough shot right there. Jabari Harvey gets it to go. Not great selection, but a great finish. Very similar to the one we saw on the other one we were just talking about. And that'll bring us to a media timeout. We've got 12 minutes to go. It remains a one-point ball game. Florida A&M and Presbyterian back and forth we go here in the first half. You're watching tonight's coverage of Big South men's basketball here on ESPN. And welcome back, everybody, as we're coming to you live from the Templeton Center here in Clinton, South Carolina. Florida A&M and Presbyterian in a tough battle here in the first half. And, Ken, you know, you look at the numbers right now. I know it's early in the ball game, but everything fairly even everywhere you look. Field goal percentage, you know, PC's made a couple of threes. That's kept them in the game, but A&M, has been able to get to the line and work the ball inside a little bit more where Presbyterian yep. has been settling for some jump yep. shots. Okay, All right, the official yeah. came over to clarify that last play was a delay of game warning on Presbyterian College after the basket as the ball was kind of knocked over into the cheerleaders. Yeah, I was just going to say, you made that point. I was going to say the big guy set the tone early. They got early paint touches for him. He turned them into goal right away. Had three buckets early. Kind of set the tone for this Rattler squad. Some full court pressure now from Presbyterian. And they break the pressure. No problem there for the Rattlers. Currently with a one point lead. As Eatman has it. And kicks it back out. Nice pass inside and slamming it home to Darius Eatman. Eatman's going to dunk the ball when he gets within six feet of the bucket. You can count on that. A good find there by his teammate. Blue Hose working around the perimeter and a miscommunication. They throw it away. Good pressure defense, especially by Bettis, overplaying the wing pass. And while Florida A&M has used their size on the offensive end of the court, as you mentioned, kind of getting those paint touches, and here's another look at the last one for Eaton and slamming it home. Their defense on the perimeter so far has been pretty good. They've moved their feet, they're keeping their hands up, they're contesting shots, and making life tough for the Blue Hose on that yeah. end of the court. Good job, good start on the road. Bettis with another tough one. Teal runs it down. A&M extending that defense well beyond the three-point line. Stewart kicks it out. Good ball movement. And Crosby James knocks down a triple and headed to the line. Tough shot right there. And, you and the contact. You said it, Alex. It was ball movement. Very nice ball movement. It, uh, it really is. That, that's been one of the things about this program, as you and I have been around this program for quite a number of years, the ball movement this year seems to be just exponentially better than it's been in a lot of years. I think, you know, you mentioned Coach Q and the you know, outstanding job he's done in this program. He really has, and now things are starting to come together. He's got, like you mentioned before, four or five guards who can really, really very well-rounded players. They guard well, they can shoot it well, they handle it well, 
and they all pass the ball well, and now playing together, they're going to be tough to beat this year. And one of the other things I think, as opposed to other years with Presbyterian, they push the ball up court and they get into their offensive sets quickly. Quickly. They, they're not That's waiting right. until there's 15 seconds exactly on the shot clock right. to set things up. Exactly and that right. way, if your first look's not there, you have enough time to reset. And a foul there on the drive as Coffey attacking the basket. Kobe Stewart. And the foul's going to go on Kobe Stewart. Yep. His first third team foul on PC. And Coffey to the free throw line. Hand in the Rice Krispie jar. You know, trying to help his teammate. Coffey just two of four from the line on the year. First one looks good and right through there. And we're all tied up again. I had a feeling we'd see a good one tonight, and I think I think that's going to prove true. And one more coming up for the sophomore out of Painesville, Ohio. And second one rolls off. Jonah Pierce, tough rebound. Job by Pierce in traffic, strong hands. And now Pierce has it at the top of the key. Blue Hose worked that motion to get James in the corner back out to Stewart. Good communication defensively for AM. Absolutely. There's a matchup I want to see all night. Pierce, tough move, gets it to go. Over Grant. Double spin cycle. Yes. That was good patience by Pierce. He's a good player down there. He's impressing me this year. There's no question. His touch around the basket and his footwork. It seems it's like every time that. I get a look at this kid has improved. Yep, stayed he with He got it. Grant, yeah, to jump to soft, his right. Soft delivery, too, after the contact. It's a good job by Pierce. Pierce 53% from the line. Oh, that was That, that one was did not, not come out of his no, hands no, right at all. No, it did not. Hopefully we call that one a slip, right? Under 10 to go here in the first half. Two-point Presbyterian lead as Parker sets the offense for A&M. And Coffey, a little floater in the paint, can't get it go. The defender fell down, and then James took a shot after securing the rebound. The foul's going to go on number 11. Yep, Coffey. On Coffey. Maybe a little just frustration foul there from Coffey after missing the, the gimme shot almost. And I am doing my best not to work Coffey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he like. plays with a lot of energy. There you go. Yeah, you want to throw that one in there? I was <laughs> I had about three that I'm just tr dying not to say, you know. Blue Hose oh, with a two-point lead. Crosby James, proven scorer even at this level. Great block by the big guy. Here come the Rattlers back the other way. Parker, long pass, sets up Coffee. They go down low again, and a strong That's finish well by done. Lamar. That's well done. Could have taken a jump shot, had a better one underneath, delivered the ball on time, and then the nice, easy finish. Well done by the Rattlers. There's Blue Hose trying to shake free right now. This A&M defense, nice jump stop in the paint. Mincy gets it to go. Nice individual out bucket there by Mincy. The offense set him up to do what he needed to do. Mid-range is true. Lucky he didn't get away with one there. That he did get away with one. As Rattlers go down low, the double team comes in Great time. Help. Nice Great anticipation help. that time by Harvey. And the lob to Pierce. That's got to be a goal ten, and it is. And so give the two points to Presbyterian. Once again, those are things that you can't do on the road. What if they get beat by two or one? That could be your fatal mistake. You got to be – now, look, nobody's perfect. Those little things, though, you got to let this thing go. It's just not – Yeah, that was clearly about the Not real wise, that's right. Love the effort, but – I believe the officials wiser. did mark that play. They'll look at it at halftime or at the next media timeout, but it appeared to be a clear goal 10. Three from the wing up and in. First made three for the Rattlers on the day. June, and that's that bucket. Louis Jean. Or Jean. I'm so French. 
Um, oh, nice give thing. and go. Right back to him. Give and go and give and go. That's right. <laughs> back and forth. That's right. Three point Presbyterian lead. They go inside again to Grant. Might have got away Might've with a little, a little push off, wing. but he puts it up and in. Didn't get called for it. Big guy utilizing that bulk and a little chicken wing. Mincy, quick move, and he's going to be fouled. Mincy with the Euro. I like that. That first step is electric for Corey Mincy, and that'll bring us to a media timeout. 7.22 to go in the first half. Well, it's been a one-point game every time we've hit a commercial break. No different here with seven minutes left in the opening half. You're watching tonight's coverage of Big South Men's Basketball on ES. And welcome back, everybody. 7.22 to play in the first half. Florida A&M and Presbyterian in a tight one here tonight. Right now, Presbyterian with a one-point lead. Leading scorers up to this point. Shannon Grant, eight points for A&M. He's on four of four shooting, has not missed so far. Eight points for Jonah Pierce for Presbyterian. He has not missed four of four from the floor. Both teams over 50% shooting up to this point. As Mincy at the free throw line. And first one up and good. And the Blue Hose with a two point lead. We've already had six ties and five lead changes 12 minutes into the game. And he gets them both. Mincy now with four points. Bettis calling out the set for A&M. Still plenty of time on the shot clock as they work it around to Lamar. They're trying to look down low for Grant. Pierce is fronting him. And a long three on the way, up and good. Louis. June, I believe it's pronounced, gets it to go. His second bucket of the day. It's not the most beautiful jump shot or set shot, but it's going in so far. He's got five points on, or excuse me, eight points after that now on three of three shooting. Nice pass, Pierce working hard to get position, but can't finish that time. Rattlers quickly back on the other end. Lamar a little loose with the ball that time. And now diving on the floor, looks like it's going to be a jump ball situation. And I believe it'll be Presbyterian possession. Great job by Crosby. James went to the floor early and was waiting on the Rattler to tie him up. I don't think he gets to that ball if he doesn't get Watch how early he goes to the floor. Look at that. Already on the floor waiting on the opposition. That's why he got the tie up. Gets his team a possession. That loose ball was created. Marquise Barnett got his hands on it as Lamar was spinning and... You're exactly right, those hustle plays, those loose balls, those 50-50 balls. Those are what Presbyterian has been winning more of those than in years past, and that's why the one loss record looks like it does. Absolutely. That and ball movement and shooting the ball pretty well. Reddish thrown into the paint, knocked away from behind. Rattlers force a turnover. Louis June. Hangs in the air, tough nice shot. Pocket in transition, no doubt. He's, he's got a game high 10 now. Barnett backing down. Mouse missed it. And can't get it to fall. Might should have gone glass. He got the look he wanted, got right to the spot. And hanging in the air, Bettis gets it to fall. Bettis has played well. Right now, Florida A&M getting a little bit from everywhere. The inside game, the dribble drive, right. the outside shooting. Does not look like a team that remains winless up to this point. Mincy's three off the mark. And the rebound snagged by Eaton. Four point Florida A&M lead. As they working around to Chapman. Maybe a late, late whistle, call, but they but did get the right. offensive foul. That's going to go against Florida A&M, their fifth team foul now. No rest 
two on Chapman. Here it is. Yeah, just put his shoulder right into the chest of Reddish Roan. Yep. 5.05 to go here in the opening half. And the inbound pass, throwing it away. Presbyterian unforced error. And a turnover on the inbound gives it right back to Florida a and I think that's two for Presbyterian unforced errors here in the early going. Not sure what the turnover count is right now for Presbyterian, but I know that's two. It's at least six. As the official gonna check on the replay here. 457 remaining here in the first half. We got a four point ball game. And maybe a clock issue as we're going to get everything sorted out here. I think they're satisfied. So Rattlers basketball, they get it into Eaton. Parker, cross-court pass, down low to Eatman. What a block by Pierce, but a whistle and a foul. Foul called on Jonah Pierce. Whether he fouled him or not, we'd have to see the replay, but the, the problem, let's watch here, is letting him get that position. You, If you're Pierce, you've got to get around better. Yeah, he, he, And he clearly got it, him yeah, there on the yeah, left arm. Yeah. But the thing about it is, the play was made by Eatman early by getting that position, but Pierce... You've got to get around. You've got you got to move your feet and get around. You can't count on being able being able to block a kid who's six ten or whatever Eatman is from behind like that. Just not going to get many of those. And I think some of that was created as Pierce is trying to front him defensively. The ball movement around the perimeter. That's right. Until Eatman That's finally right. got the position, yep. they had That's to right. look to, to feed it inside. It's called a California cut. Eatman did when he gets that position. And he gets his free throws to go. And a good job by the big man knocking those free throws down. That'll go a long way toward keeping you in this game or, or keeping a lead. Blue Hose trailing by six, largest deficit of the game for either team. And here's Teal outside. Drives baseline right into the teeth of the defense and it's taken away. Good D by the Rattlers. Good no call, I thought, as well. Bettis holding down the turbo button. Fires a jumper from the free throw line. Teal. No good, but he'll head to the stripe. And the foul's going to go on Samaj Teal. Five team fouls on Presbyterian. He's take a look. Just Bettis just got to his spot. Yeah, and Teal just got him on the elbow. Him on the elbow or right in that area. First one up and in. Rattlers certainly don't look like a team that has been getting, you know, like, you know, getting beat handily by several big Power Five schools. Bettis gets them both to go. He's perfect from the line on the year. He missed the first few games of the season. This is just his third game. And he does provide a spark coming off the bench. Certainly has here early. Eight point Rattlers lead right now. Shot clock down to 12, Harvey. Trying to create. And it's poked free from behind, nice hands. By Parker. Defensively there, Parker. So Blue Hose on inbound with six seconds to shoot. Let's see if Florida A&M can finish this defensive possession. It's been good so far. Barnett, pass inside right through the hands of Pierce and out of bounds, another turnover for the Blue Hose. It's a good look and a good find, but he put it in a tough place, right, right below his waist, and the ball got there quickly. You can't really fault Pierce on that. You'd like for him to catch that, but that's a tough, cat, tough uh, pass to catch. So under four to go here in the first half. A&M looking to extend their eight-point lead, Bettis. Working against Harvey. 
Now swings it over Parker. Coffee gets the defender up in the air, steps into a rhythm jumper, can't hit it. And Stewart with the rebound. Trying to get it down to Pierce. Working against Eatman. Ball's not loose. And he'll throw it back out top and they'll reset. Teal working against Parker. Goes away from the screen. And it's knocked out of bounds. And again, PC will inbound with six to shoot when we get back from this commercial break. Well, for the first time tonight, it is not a one-point game as we head to commercial. A&M has opened up an eight-point lead. Three minutes left to go here in the first half. We'll be right back with more men's basketball. On ESPN+. Plus. And welcome back, 3-10 to go here in the first half as Florida A&M in the midst of an 11-0 run over the last three minutes and 47 seconds on the day. The Rattlers shooting 65% from the floor and they're getting the ball to the spots on the court wherever they want it. That's right. You know, Presbyterian known as a pretty good defensive team, Alex, no question. But the Rattlers doing what they need to do. When you're on the road, you've got to seize the game at some point. I mean, there's only... Sometimes, you know, the opposition is so good or playing so well or whatever, you may never seize that opportunity. But PC has given Florida A&M chances to do that early, and they've done that. So credit them. Now, how will they go from here, you know? Um, let's see. And, and you, you expect PC to make a run. They've got good players, and they've got good coaches, and, and uh, surely playing here at home. But um, they, they'll have to – no gimmies here tonight. No gimmies. Yeah, this is a very important three-minute stretch heading Absolutely. into halftime, Absolutely. really, for both these teams. A&M trying to keep the momentum on their side. They'd like to go in the break with a lead, feeling like they can get their first win of the season. And PC wants to turn that around as the three there, as the shot clock was winding down, does not go. And under three to play. Bettis back the other way. Working to his right. And a battle down low. Grant calling for the ball. He's picked up by Scott, and they are just fighting down on the low block. And Bettis, beautiful Euro step, draws the foul. And he'll head to the line to shoot a pair. Some guys just get a lot out of their height, and Bettis seems to be one of those guys. Nice Euro down the lane. Watch this, Alex. Get some distance from the from the uh, defender and then put up yeah. a soft delivery. Didn't go, but got a trip to the line. And at just 5'11", you're right. It, t it seems like he took two really long strides. He did. Before he <laughs> elevated, kind of fading to his That's right. That's right. That's right. Very smart, heady basketball player. You can tell when you can use your positioning like that, even when you don't have the size advantage. And he caused one of uh, Presbyterian's better players to have to exit the game. Second so, one up and in. So, so far, A&M really having a good night here. Good half so far. Ten-point game. First time it's been a double-digit lead. And, again, that this aggressive defense for the Rattlers. Yeah, they look good. everything hard on the Blue Hose. Harvey dumps it. Scott banks it up and in over nice Grant. Shot. Tough shot there. And a good job by the big guy. Just stand in your position, make him make a tough one. He did. So be it. You live for another play. Now they get it down low. And with position that time, he can't get it to go. But Lamar with the putback on the Grant miss. Yeah, if you're Presbyterian, can't allow too much of that. Got to box out. Find people. I believe like, that was just the first offensive rebound for A&M. Teal and might have got hit. Good look there for Teal. He can't get it to go. Saves it and gets it off the A&M player out of bounds. It'll stay with Presbyterian. Yeah, great, nice hustle. Yep, great instincts by Teal. He's struggling a little bit offensively tonight, so he's the type of player, Alex, that he's going to do a lot of things to impact the game. See that nose for the ball. Going and getting it saves his team a possession. Yeah, he's just one of five shooting so far tonight. 
Harvey pass knocked away. It'll stay with PC as he was trying to find Scott there. Well-designed play. Defender just able to get their yep. hand in there yep. and deflect it away. Very impressed by A&M defensively so far. The inbound to Reddish Roan. Going right at Lamar, gets him off his feet, Good and block. Lamar still gets the block from behind. Back the other way, Parker. And did he stepped step out? out? He yeah. did. Stepped out. I thought maybe they called a travel yeah, if he drug so his pivot too. foot, yeah. but looks like he just stepped on the end line. Yeah, it was like one and then to leave, but he just decided to stay down, you know? Here we go. Right, so we'll take a look here one on the replay two. screen. Yeah. Well, back to the action we go. 119 to play here in the opening half. Blue Hose with the ball, trailing 38-28. Teal, tough shot. Hit the ground hard, Can't get it too. to go. He hit the floor hard there. Awkwardly, maybe on his tailbone. Yeah, I hope he's going to be all right. Yeah, you could hear the thud as he hit the court from where we are. And I hope he's going to be all right. Team's leading scorer, best three-point shooter, and a great defender as well. So we'll take a look right here and just running into Grant. Yeah, just, he just ran into a yeah, mountain. what he yeah, did. His, a little his off hip balance, or his yeah. tailbone. Maybe a little bit of ice at halftime. Like he's holding his left. Yeah, his left knee appears knee to be. Knee or thigh area. When you run into Shannon Grant at 6'10", 300 pounds. And a timeout called by Presbyterian, 105 to play in the first half. PC will be at the free throw line, trying to cut it into this 10-point lead. Presbyterian, uh, offensively, really the turnovers uh, have been the issue. They're shooting the ball fairly well, 44% from the floor, 3 of 8 from downtown. Uh, but Florida A&M, uh, their ability to get the ball down low, create off the dribble, uh, and couple that with they've hit a couple of very tough contested shots as yeah, well. Yeah, really have. Yep. And, and that's why they're shooting 63% against, yep. as you mentioned, yep. a really good defensive team in Presbyterian. Yep. Yep. Who defends well on the perimeter normally, but, you know, uh, A&M doing a good job of getting into their stuff. Like, you know, the big guy set the tone early with those two or three buckets early, and then started to get contributions from other people. No panic taking care of the basketball for the most part, and getting good looks, playing selfless basketball, and playing a sticky defense on the other end. That's why they're up by 10 and, and rolling right now here in the first half on the road. And let's see, it looks like they're gonna force Teal to come, Teal out. To come yeah. out. Which is unfortunate for Presbyterian. He's 87% from the line on yep. the year. Yep. So Reddish Roan to take the shots. Reddish Roan, first one up and in, 48% on the year. I was going to say, 87 is pretty good, isn't 87 it? 87 yeah. is pretty good, 48 not, not as good. Not ne nearly as good. But he got that one to go. Yeah. Coach Q knew what he's doing, right? You felt it. And he gets them both. Crawl in there. So it's back to an eight-point game. As A&M have been on a roll. Here's Lamar. He's been held somewhat in check. Six points on the evening. Under a minute to go. Step back three on the way from Bettis. And he got it. Bettis feeling it tonight. Pretty good defense. A decent contest. And that was a tough, a shot. tough shot. Sure did. Coming up on the final 30 seconds of the first half. Stewart finds Mincy. He's cut off as he tries to get to the basket. Stewart, nice little jab step, step back jumper. Beautiful so shot. Everything is contested. Everything, even when on the dribble drive penetration, it's cut off, passes are cut off, passing lanes are cut off. AM so far very impressive here on the road. So Florida a and is going to call 30-second timeout. We'll see what they draw up here with 13 seconds to go in the first half. You know, a team that on the season scoring 63 points a game. They're giving up 87 points a game. Uh, none of that appears to be the case tonight <laughs> really for Florida a and They've shot the basketball yeah. extremely well. 
Uh, as I mentioned, 38% on the season, 65% from the floor yeah, so far tonight. Yeah, yeah, now, to keep that up for a full 40 minutes it is a lot to ask, yeah, but even if yeah. they cool off a little bit, you're looking at a, a much better night shooting than they've had here this year. Yeah, and they've been e equally or more impressive on the defensive end. They really have. I mean, Presbyterian's no offensive powerhouse, but they got good players. They run good stuff, and they can make shots. And A&M just has done an excellent job of making them earn every bit of their 32 points. Very few easy gimme buckets given up by Florida A&M. Very well coached, you can tell. Great job, Coach, over there. McCullum. Coach McCollum in yep. his seventh year. We'll see what they yep. draw up here. Absolutely. If they try and get it inside or they just put it in the hands of a playmaker like Lamar. And over to Parker. And they are trying to get it down low. Walk. And a travel call. Yeah, and there's there's much more of a focus on making that call by the officials this year. Point of emphasis, if you will, Alex. Tough call if you're A&M there, but I, I think possibly the right call. Nancy with five seconds to go. Step back three is blocked by Grant as time expires. It's a great job by Grant. Yeah, Big nice man. close out on the and shooter yeah, there. On the perimeter, that's awesome. So we hit halftime. Florida A&M with a nine-point lead, 41 to 32. A great 20 minutes of basketball for Coach McCollum's team as Florida A&M trying to get their first win of the season. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll have some highlights, some first-half stats, and more. You're watching. And welcome back, everybody. 41-32, your halftime score. Florida A&M leading Presbyterian College here in Clinton, South Carolina. Tonight's broadcast of Big South men's basketball is brought to you in part by Hercules Tires, reminding you to ride on our strength. Hercules Tires has been the official tire sponsor for the Big South Conference for over 65 years, providing an unbeatable quality at an unmatched value. For a retailer nearest you, visit HerculesTires.com. Sunbelt Rentals, no job too big or small. Sunbelt Rentals reminding you, we have equipment for that. First Citizens Bank, for all your personal and business banking needs, think first. First Citizens Bank, forever first. And Jersey Mike's, freshly sliced, freshly grilled, right in front of you, made to order sandwiches. Jersey Mike's, a sub above. So we'll step aside again. We'll come back. We'll have some first half highlights. And what a first half it was between Florida A&M and Presbyterian College. We'll hit a break. We'll be back with more. You're watching Big South Men's Basketball. And plus. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Halftime here at the Templeton Center, Florida A&M, leading Presbyterian College 41 to 32. An entertaining first half between these two teams. We saw seven ties and six lead changes, but it was Florida A&M really from about seven minutes to go in the half till about two minutes to go in the half went on that 13-0 spurt and, and kind of at least took control of this game. Yeah, big guy setting the tone early, like we talked about, Grant. Nice bucket inside with the left hand, and then BC back on the other end. Pierce with the finish off the nice speed from Teal, I believe it was. Rattlers, and there's the big guy again, being patient, going to the other side, utilizing that girth to score buckets in the paint, get his team started off really well. Yeah, Let's Grant has been a force down low for Florida A&M tonight. He's got eight points and four rebounds. He's four or five from the floor. As you look right here, just, again, yep. the patience, nice. the footwork, the yep. little up and up under and in the under, finish with right. the left hand. There's the find by Barnett, and Stewart knocks down the three. So both teams sharing the ball very well here early in the going. Nice little cross there and got itself free for the jump shot. And those are the kind of shots that Florida A&M, they just haven't been falling this year. But tonight, for one reason or another, those contested shots, the fall away, the step backs, they've been able to make enough of those. You know, you're shooting 65% from the floor. Yeah. You're, you're making enough of everything, really. Yeah. Uh, but tonight, those tough shots and those contested jumpers yeah. are, are falling in at a much higher clip than normal. Harvey with the tough shot off the glass there. As for Presbyterian, they'll look to bounce back. You know, they didn't play poorly on the offensive end of the first yep. half. 44% from the floor, 3 of 9 from 3. Only got to the free throw line yep. uh, six times. But it's, you know, Samaj Teal 
just one of five. Marquise Barnett, 0 of two shooting the basketball. Those are two guys that I think they'd like to see get going yep. in the second half. Crosby James knocked down that three and got fouled. And then there's Pierce on the inside again. The nice patience and the double spin. And then there's the outside J we talked about by June. Made two or three of those in the first half. And the dump down and then good finish there. And there was Caleb Scott with a by strong Scott. finish inside. Yep. Yeah. There's off the and bounce there. You take there. a look Step at back. Bettis. He's got a game high yep. 11 points in the first half, including that triple. So we'll go ahead. We'll hit another break. We'll come back. We'll have some first-half stats. We'll get you all set for the second half between Florida A&M and Presbyterian College. We're live in Clinton, South Carolina, A&M, with a 41-32 lead. We'll be back. And plus. And welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, here at the Templeton Center, Florida A&M. Trying to hang on to get their first win of the season. They lead Presbyterian 41 to 32 here at halftime as we look at some of our first half stats brought to you by First Citizens Bank and everything tilting in the Rattlers' direction. 65% from the floor, out-rebounding Presbyterian by two. They've been out-rebounded by an average of nine a game coming into tonight, so a much better job on the glass. The assists fairly even, the three-point percentage a and 3 of 6, Presbyterian 3 of 9, and the turnovers neck and neck as well. But it, it seems like a and is, is getting those clutch shots to fall. They're making the contested looks tonight, and, and they could be on the heels of their first win. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really nice effort in the first half. You put two halves together here, and you get a nice win on the road. There's no shame in beating a Presbyterian team who's already having a nice year and I think are, are, is going to have a really good year. And uh, so if you can go on the road, if you're A&M, and get this, that can go a long way, starts building some confidence, just kind of flush the first part of the year. That's your money-making tour, you know? And you play in all those Power 5 schools. Hadn't fared very well so far, but a chance to turn it around here tonight. Put together a good second half, especially on the defensive end. Continue to do that. Turn that into points. Maybe some in transition. Run your stuff offensively. You should get out of here with a win. Presbyterian, on the other hand, they need to make some adjustments and uh, start taking a little bit better care of the basketball. I mean, not an excessively high number of turnovers, but, you know, they like to get out and run, too. They got good athletes. So if you can do that without turning it over a lot, then uh, be able to get back in this game. And one of the things for Presbyterian to get out and run will – A&M's got to miss some shots, you, right. you, know, you know, and you secure right. the defensive rebound and take point. out. That's right. If they're shooting 65%, that's right. you're not getting any defensive <laughs> rebounds. Right. And that's, that's one right. of the reasons they haven't been able to get out in transition it, it, as much as I think Coach it, Q would it, like. It's not a super hard game to figure <laughs> out a lot of nights, is it? Exactly so we're right. all set here for the second half, 20 minutes back on the clock. Florida A&M and Presbyterian College. It was back and forth really for about 15 minutes before A&M went on a little spurt there late in the yeah. first half. And they've got a nine-point lead at the break. Yep, no doubt. You know, we mentioned outside of Grant, the small starting lineup. Well, a lot of times you'll run into teams who play a lot bigger than they actually are. Florida A&M, at least tonight, this is our first look at them this year, at least tonight, playing much bigger than they're listed. And there's Bettis. He's got a game high 11 points off the bench. And he'll start the second half. Teal with the overplay, good job. And if the Rattlers find Grant, and I'll we've got a foul. foul. 12, I think, Alex. No, number one, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was 12. Parker. No, I, so first foul on Bettis, first team foul here in the second half. I thought he put up a one then a, and a two with it. I, maybe it was. Yeah, and there, there it, it is. There's yep. the correction. It's number 12, yep. K.J. Parker. That's the first foul on Parker. So the Blue Hose get the stop on defense, and they turn it right back over. Yeah, Teal jump with no real design, you know, what he was going to do. Kind of got it's caught in a, the air. You yeah. know, a few plays like that for Presbyterians, it's just not as crisp as they have no, been here right. early in the right. year. Here's Bettis back the other way. 
Parker on the right side. Now they find Grant. And A&M nearly gives it right back, and they do. Reddish thrown on the run now. And his pass off the mark. Well advised. Yeah, A&M was all over that. Yeah. Here's Lamar, finds Bettis in the corner for three, up and in. Yeah, might have got away with a little hop, but knocked it down. Bettis, tough player. Love Bettis now, 14 points, that leads all scores. And that's a very good matchup with he and Teal, and he's getting the best of them, except for not on that cross. Couldn't Teal has it, it knocked loose, it's on the court. And it'll be a jump ball situation. Presbyterian will re retain possession. Samaj Teal is an excellent all-around basketball player. One of the things that he's so good at is he's a catalyst for things, usually a lot of good things. Haven't gotten that out of him tonight. Knockdown shot from threes. And we've got a whistle and a foul away from the ball. That's going to go on Louis June. Uh -huh. So 20 back on the shot clock for the Blue Hose. Reddish Roan's got it at the elbow. And there's Teal, he'll bring it back out. And again, Almost miscommunication. That time Parrish was there to recover. And six on the shot clock, Reddish Roan working on Lamar. Spins inside, nice move, can't get it to fall. And the rebound to Florida A&M. Back the other way. Louis June tries to get it to Grant, Pierce knocks it away. Good, good interior defense that time. Here's Teal for three, short, and Pierce gonna be whistled over the back on the rebound. Yeah, I thought Teal might have settled for that on a night when he's kind of struggling shooting the ball, you know, early in the shot clock in transition, get a little better one than that. I think Teal was willing to let it fly, he's just wanting one to fall, because sometimes all it takes is that one That's right. to take that lid off. Look for them to try to get Parrish going as well. Louis Jean over to Bettis down low. Now they get it to Grant. Baby hook up and in and a foul. He's just a load, Alex. He He's really an absolute is. Absolute load. If he catches it that deep, you're in trouble. Pierce is a very good low post defender. There's no question. Moves his feet well, got good length and all that. But watch this. All that girth in there. He's catching the ball four feet from the bucket and he can make that little jump hook with either hand. He's proven that tonight. Gets fouled there and still knocks down the shot. He's got soft touch. He's clearly very strong. He outweighs Pierce by 80 pounds. Yeah, no so question. So Pierce is obviously. And Pierce is not a skinny kid either. I mean, he's, he's pretty well built. It's a little slender, but Grant, it's just a load. And, and not a horrible looking free throw You're either. exactly right. Yeah, he's, he's shown his soft touch. And he's shown his footwork as well to get that position. Everybody knows where he's trying to go, and he's still able to get there. When well, Bettis is having a heck of a game, too, against a really good guard. And I believe a kickball as Barnett tried to split the double team. It's off the leg of Lamar, so PC will inbound. 15-point lead for AM, largest of the night. Possibly their largest lead of the season. Yeah, you would think, you know. Somebody needs to step up for Presbyterian against this sticky defense. Great job by AM once again. Down to seven on the shot clock. And they get it out. Parrish is going to fire a three off the rim, no good. And Everything is earned, you know. Not giving. Watch Bettis. And Parker will reset. Rattler's working around the perimeter. Just under 17 minutes to play. A&M with a 15 point lead. Bettis, who has been red hot tonight. There's Lamar attacking, hanging in the air. Tough shot. Got and Lamar, a whistle and a foul, that. yeah. A little frustration there as Lamar. Very athletic move to get him a nice look around the you know, around the bucket about, what, five, six feet away, just couldn't get it to go down. Watch this, off the one foot, hangs in the air, can't get it down, and then his zeal to try to go get it. A little bit of a 
Teal to set things up for the Out Blue Hose. Out of control hose. just a little bit. We'll see if PC can get something going offensively. Louis Jean guarding Barnett. He spins inside into the double team and it's knocked away. Bettis now on the run. Leaves it, jumper on the way. It's short, off the mark by Parker. Parker has just flat out struggled shooting the basketball this season so far. Just his second field goal attempt tonight. He's 0 for 2. Here's Barnett. Inside kicks it out. Parrish wide open. Still can't get it to fall. And the rebound to AM. And one shot and done. Good job boxing out on the boards. Good contest of the shot. AM very impressive. Here's Bettis. Steps into a 15 footer. Nothing but net. Well, he's, you have he to is, close out on the shooter when he's out there, the he, way he's shooting it tonight. He, but he has been a difference maker tonight. Bettis has. Excellent job at the guard position. He's got 16 points on the night on five of seven shooting. 17-point lead is the largest it's been. Reddish Roan a little out of control there. Absolutely. And Bettis has it knocked away, but Parrish going to be whistled for the foul. Foul number 12. And that'll bring us to our first media timeout here in the second half. A&M starting the second half much like they ended the first half. 17-point Rattlers lead. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more Big South men's basketball right here on ESPN+. Plus. On our string. And welcome back. 15-18 left to play here in Clinton, Florida. A&M has opened up the second half on an 8-0 run. Presbyterian in the first four minutes here of this half, 0 of 4 from the floor. They also have four turnovers. So Florida A&M playing some excellent basketball right now. They've got a 17-point lead on the road. Here's Chapman, picked up by Harvey. Bettis has been the star tonight. He's got 16 points to lead all scorers. They get it down low to Eatman. Spins to his left. Tough finish over Scott. You know, they, they don't have a whole bunch of size at the guard position, but down low they got a couple of big guys that play very effectively or down around the basket. Eatman and Grant are getting it done, and they're doing a good job of getting it to them to get it done. And, and they're playing under control. They're, they're not trying to do too much as A&M on the rebound. Bettis on the move. He's quickly double teamed and has it knocked out of bounds. And PC forces the turnover. And now the officials are going to talk about it. I think it's I know it's, it is going to be A yeah. and M ball. Just to poke away, I believe. Yeah, PC definitely got a piece of it. Didn't yep. see if it, you know, maybe grazed the leg yeah, of an A and M right. player that's last. Right. Nice job by the officials getting together. Hey, did you yep, have a good look right. at good it? Piece of Let's officiated. make sure and get that's this right. right. That's right. Every possession counts. The inbound to Lamar goes right into the chest of Harvey. Can't get it to go. And the rebound out to Mincy. Good job by Scott, tipping that ball to his teammate. Here's James going baseline, leaves it for Harvey, three on the way. Blue Host just can't buy a bucket right now, and it's out of bounds. A&M ball. Right now, a 10-0 run for the Rattlers here to open the second half. A&M's doing such a good job defensively that Presbyterian is only getting some select few looks and they're not capitalizing on it and it's been a cumulative effect defensively for A&M. Once again, really getting it done on the road. Here's Chapman, he'll swing it back out top to Parker. Parker's got it, he'll fire three behind a screen. Can't get it to fall, Stewart on the board. NC working on Bettis. Excellent transition defense once again. They, just, they can stop the ball so well. They really do. And Scott working against Eatman, a whistle and a foul on big number 24, Jadarius Eatman, the 6'10", 235-pound yeah. senior. You just feel like Presbyterian is going to go on some kind of run. They need they need one or two guys to get something going. But a and is just not having any of it right now. Don't know if it's going to come tonight. Blue Maybe Hose. a mini run, but who knows? Yeah, Blue Hose 0 of 5 from behind the arc in the second half. Now just 3 of 14 on the night. Here's Harvey to fire another deep one. In and out. 
Ball is knocked off Lamar. Bettis able to track it down and keep it in. He's just so quick. He's a heck of a player, just, boy. I tell you what. Just over 13 minutes left to go. A 19 point Florida A&M lead. 10 on the shot clock. Bettis is going to have to hurry, trying to get around Mincy. And kicks it out. It ends up with Lamar, corner three, no good. Blue Hose now trying to get off in transition off a rare Rattler miss. And there's Crosby James, and he'll head to the free throw line. Well, he's instant offense. Well, it's a good aggressive move. I thought he got kind of got bailed out by the official. Not saying it was a horrible call. Let's watch this. It's a good aggressive move. Yeah, enough, I guess. A little yeah, bit with of the a body, push. I think. Yeah, didn't get squared up guarding him, so a little better call than I thought at first. Wasn't a whole bunch of contact, but enough to knock Crosby James off of his initial path, I guess, is what the referee was seeing. First free throw, that is the first point of the second half for Presbyterian. June back in for A&M. One more coming up for the senior. And he gets them both. Danger time now for the Blue Hose, Alex. We gotta get back in this game with a couple of good defensive trips. And an offensive foul. He called a hook, I believe, on the drive. I'd like to see that one again. It's a tough call if you're A&M. Watch this right here. So he clears him Eatman. out. Yeah, just a moving screen. I think he was oh, okay. yeah, they, backing yeah, okay. him down, yeah, but yeah, as yeah. the player was driving right was, at him. I was thinking they were calling that on the guy who was dribble penetrating, but they did call it on the big guy. Here's Mincy working it up for the Blue Hose. James trying to create off the dribble, nothing there. The perimeter defense just outstanding yeah, see, really all night is. long. It really is. Harvey. Now that may have been where someone not, gets bailed out uh, yeah. by a foul call. Look, it was a foul, but he was out of control. You probably want to let that one, let him get that shot off, just don't foul. And he's kind of falling away to his right. Would have been a tremendous circus shot if Harvey can get this to go. <laughs> An awful lot of leather there. I tell you what, it's a tough call if you're Eatman. Presbyterian will definitely take it. Let's see if they can capitalize on maybe a, a slight ref's mistake. And I think I think all these refs have been very good tonight. Called a very good basketball game. Very tough thing to do. But sometimes maybe something like that, you can capitalize on that, turn that into some buckets, and try to get back in this thing. And he gets them both to go. And you know, Ken, I, I, I'm just looking at some of the numbers for Presbyterian. The three for 15 from three is really surprising to me. They've got four guys that shoot well over 40% on the year. Yep. And just nobody can seem to get it going from the outside. Yeah, credit that D for Florida A&M. No question. It's been outstanding. Bettis. Look at Bettis. Tough shot. Good Can't move. get it to fall. Oh, and and it ends up over. with Grant. He can't get it to go. Somebody squeeze it. And Stewart comes away with it. Presbyterian fortunate to get out of there. And, get and an, an offensive foul, foul on Mincy. And it'll be Florida A&M ball when we come back. 51 to 36, the Rattlers on top. 11.36 left to play here in Clinton. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more. You're watching men's basketball right And welcome back, everyone. 11.36 left to play here at the Templeton Center. And the second half has started much like the first half ended. Florida A&M outscoring Presbyterian 10 to four at this point in the second half. PC 0 of seven from the floor, 0 of six from three, but they have got to the free throw line and that's where all four points have come. First off, I've got to take care of business. I can't believe you didn't enter the dance off. <laughs> <laughs> 
you may have won it. But uh, yeah, you're right, man. Great job by Florida A&M. Just continuing to up the pressure defensively and to handle what pressure PC is putting on them. Nice hands that time. Kobe Stewart, Stewart knocking yep. that one away. Great court awareness. He knew right what that ball wanted to go. Yep. Here's James to see if the Blue Hose can take nice advantage. Nice Strong bucket. finish. You know, we've talked about it before. Crosby James just six feet tall. He's so strong. He, he really is. He's physically tough to move when he gets his momentum going like that towards the basket. Got that fullback-like body, and he utilizes it really well. Big-time scorer has been held in check at least early tonight. And a whistle and a foul on Presbyterian. And it's going to go on Stewart. Stewart, I believe. Kobe Stewart. And this will be key for Florida A&M. How do they handle a Presbyterian run? Yep. Because they're a team that's still learning how to close out games. If PC catches fire in the next couple of minutes, right. how does A&M handle that? How does Coach McCollum talk to his team and settle them down? Because it, it feels like it's going to come at some point. Three up from the corner. And no good from Chapman. Blue Hose with the rebound. I mean... Transition, half court, it doesn't matter. They have just been very good. A little bit of a late contest there yeah, now by Grant. Scott. Scott was within his wheelhouse, his scoring range. Got up the nice, quick little push shot. Slight defensive mistake there by Grant. Scott now with four points. The lead's down to 11. Closer than PC's been in a long time. Parker driving, kicks it out. Louis Jean can't get it to go, and offensive foul, or a loose ball foul on yeah. the rebound, I should say, on Louis Jean. And now kind of in a reverse way, kind of a danger time for Florida A&M as Presbyterian has kind of crept back in this thing. He's just a strong Look there rebound on the replay, by Scott. Yeah. Strong hands. He is a strong young Scott man. Scott has played some good minutes. Really some, has. Some hard, tough minutes here tonight, especially when you're banging with Eatman and you're yeah. banging with Grant right. down low. Outsized. So that was the eighth team foul on A&M with 10.02 left to play. It'll put Presbyterian at the line. Nice free throw. Big free throws, especially when you're trying to get back in the game, even in your own building. All of these, you need to you need to make a high these at a high clip. Mincy gets does. them both. Lead down to single digits. That's uh, just like you said, Alex. Let's see how well Florida AM handles the pressure. This guy's been excellent so far tonight. There's a call. A whistle away from the ball. Timeout, I believe. Yeah, okay, timeout. A yep. Timeout called by AM. With 9.52 left to play. 51-42, Rattlers on top. PC is creeping back ever so slowly. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more. You're watching tonight's coverage of Big South Men's Basketball right here. Best stories in sports on ESPN+. Plus. And welcome back once again, everybody, here at the Templeton Center. Florida A&M leading Presbyterian College, 51-42, just under 10 minutes left to play. A&M has cooled off shooting the ball a little bit in the second half, still over 50% on the night. And there's the man right there, Bettis, with the ball in his hands. He's got 16 points. Mincy giving him fifths right now. Strong move by Lamar. He has it knocked away, but it'll stay with the Rattlers. Surprise, no call there. They've got five seconds on the shot clock. We'll see what they draw up here. And they try the lob to Eaton. They get it to him. And his shot way too strong. Blue Hose with the rebound. Might have gotten hit. Mincy from the corner. Still can't buy a three. Pretty good look, though, in transition. Presbyterian now 0 of 7 in the second half from behind the strike. 
Here's Bettis again. He'll set things up. Here's Parker on the wing. Looking for Lamar, nice defense again. Kobe Stewart, the deflection. He's got great length and really just really great does. awareness of, as that ill-advised pass by James taken away. Nine point A&M lead, Bettis. Finds Parker. They're looking for Eaton down low. And a big Euro step. Shot no good, rebound knocked over the backboard, and it'll belong to the Blue Hose. So PC a chance to, to creep even closer yep. here. Still plenty of time in this big game. possession right here, next Number three one. minutes. Marquise it's gonna Arnett. be very big either way. It'll be Mincy working on Bettis. There's a screen from Scott out top. Nice turnaround jumper and Mincy gets it to drop. Good utilization of the screen by Mincy. Bet Bettis with a good D, but just that split second and coming off that screen, he rose up just in time, knocked it down. Good job by Mincy. Mincy the freshman with a big shot right there. Seven point ball game. And the pass inside, he Even, lost his yep, footing and went down. Did. Here's Stewart on the run Ooh. and there it is, the intentional foul. Yeah, you can't do that. He, uh, it's Louis June just Louis June. grabbed him around the waist. Yeah. Clearly an intentional foul. And that'll be two shots in the ball. Like the breakaway, you know. Intentional foul number four by Louis June. So that'll be three on June. And we'll take a break. 7.55 to go. Seven-point game. Florida A&M on top. We'll be right back with more Big South men's basketball on ESPN. The winners are made. And welcome back to the Templeton Center. Florida A&M with a seven-point lead over Presbyterian College. But PC headed to the free throw line after an intentional foul. And Kobe Stewart can't connect on the first one. A&M has cooled off shooting the basketball, but part of that is a little bit of a credit to Presbyterian College's defense. Yeah, I think so. The Rattlers just 4 of 15 from the floor here in the second half. As Stewart, the second one, wow. rolls out. Big opportunity missed there. So but the you lead do still get the ball, of course. The lead remains at 7. Presbyterian 0 of 7 on threes here in the second half. Just three of 16 on the night. We got a whistle and a foul. And so PC headed back to the free throw line again in the bonus for the rest of the night. And Harvey will head to the stripe. Good job by Harvey, forcing the action, keeping his dribble alive as he's advancing toward the basket under heavy duress. First one up and in. And able to get the trip you know, to the line so you score without the clock moving. It's key to getting back in the game. Anytime you can do that. Harvey gets them both. It's down to a five point ball game. Presbyterian 13 of 15 from the free throw line tonight. Only 63% on the season, but so far tonight, They've been deadly from the stripe. And a nice move to the basket, but Coffee couldn't get it to go. Overpercolated. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now the Blue Hose with a big offensive possession. A bucket here, and it feels like all the momentum I just swings could, to the home team. I just couldn't help <laughs> so it. So you just couldn't help it. Harvey, short. three comes up short, and it's out of bounds. It'll belong to the Rattlers, I believe, and it will. Yeah, I think Kobe Stewart hit that. Trying to keep it alive. So 7.07 left to go. Some full court pressure from Harvey here. And 
And Parker able to get across the timeline and then a whistle and a foul on Harvey, and that's six on Presbyterian. Why do that? Outstanding pressure all that time, and then he bails, bails, the, uh, bails Parker out with a silly reach in. You know, those are the kind of fouls that will frustrate a coaching staff. No doubt. As they work it around, Bettis guarded by Mincy. Bettis gets to the paint. Tough shot, can't get it to fall, but he'll head to the line to shoot a pair. He's yeah. clever. He is. That quick first step. Yep. And the ability to stretch it out with that euro step. Pretty much control what happens as he's launching into a scoring angle. And first one is up and good. Yep. Now five of five from the line tonight. You've got guards that can make free throws. It's a nice luxury to have. Second one up and in. Bettis remains perfect from the stripe on the season. Had to wait till after he shot to bring that up, of there course. Seven-point A&M lead. Got all the way up to 19 at one point. Blue Hose have chipped away and chipped away here in the second half, and there's a whistle and a foul on Coffee. Have too strong seen? on that one? Yeah, a little too strong on that one. <laughs> um, I was going to say, we haven't heard from Marquise Barnett lately, especially on the offensive Marquise end. Barnett. As he's been held scoreless up to this point. No points tonight at all. No huh? points. He has dealt with some foul trouble, and a free throw rattles home. And maybe that's what it takes to get him going. Back to a six-point game. One more coming up for the junior out of Saginaw, Michigan. Second one rolls out, rebound to A&M. Lamar's done a nice job on the boards. I believe we have a combined four offensive rebounds tonight. The, the defense is tonight. They've been guarding the perimeter. They've been boxing out. Just no second chance opportunities for either team really throughout this ball game. Parker, less than 10 to shoot now. Speaks to good coaching. And Lamar, tough shot, well, gets it to go. He's athlete, isn't he? What an athlete that kid is. I don't know how that ball fit. It looked like it went directly through the hand of the defender, the attempted shot block. Here's Scott out top. Eight point, A&M lead. Mincy attacking, kicks it out. Stewart's gonna fire a corner three. Big one. Gets Big it one. to go. Needed that one. First three ball of the second half for the Blue Hose. So PC's put themselves in position to try to win this game. Credit them. Here's Parker around a screen. Five and a half to play. We got a five-point ball game. And a whistle and a foul, and I believe that'll be Mincy out yep. top. And that's seven on Presbyterian. And now A&M headed to the strike. So far tonight, A&M 11 to 13 from the line. PC now 14 to 17. Both teams just shooting the basketball well. One and, one. and I like that Mincy went to the official and asked him to explain it, and the official explained it. That's, that's good basketball. It's good game management, not only by the official, but Mincy to go in a civil way without, you know, blowing up. Just go over there and, you know, have an intelligent conversation. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Matter of fact, I'd like to see more of that. Yeah, very mature, just a freshman. You Absolutely. know, hey, wh what did I do? Exactly. Tell, me, tell me how so I can I correct can work it. On That's that next exactly time right. And not do it again. You know, it's those adjustments in game as well. Right. Hey, if this is going to be exactly a call to right. foul tonight, I can't right. do this tonight. Right. Seven point AM lead. Officials don't get enough credit. <laughs> True to Barnett that. trying to get going, spinning in the paint. Kicks it out. Stewart from the same spot as a moment ago, this time no good, and Grant with a rebound. Like Parker you back said, the other way. Not many second chance opportunities either way. Good job by both teams. Boxing out. 
Yeah, both teams, two offensive rebounds tonight. Grant working on Scott. Little baby hook again. This time it's off the mark. Got a good look. Stewart, nice pass. Barnett with a layup. One of very few times we've seen a breakdown defensively in transition by Florida A&M. Great vision there by Stewart, sure able to see that one. Just over four minutes to go. A five-point A&M lead. Bettis is going to fire a three with a hand in his face. No good. Scott with a rebound. Lou Hose with a chance now. Cut it to a one-possession game. Mincy goes around the screen, pulls up over Grant, gets it well to drop. Mincy's a good player. Starting to Mincy show it tonight. now, 10 points. He and Kobe Stewart with two Blue Hose players in double figures. He's got that classic square up jump shot, knows when to rise up, get those good looks. A lot of them go down. Good shooter, good player. Lamar Look pass bigger. inside to Grant. Beautiful wow. finish. Great feed. It was. Just a great, ex a well executed it offensive really set was. right there. It really was. Get the big guy those paint touches. See what he can do with them. Here's Stewart. 16 to shoot. Out top to Mincy. Goes around a screen. Jumper from the free throw line, no good, but a whistle and a foul. That'll put Mincy at the stripe when we come back. PC very aggressive on the offensive end. They've cut it to a five-point game. They trailed by as many as 19. We're due for an exciting three minutes and 16 Absolutely. seconds coming up. You're watching tonight's coverage of Big South men's basketball right here on ESPN+. Plus. Best stories in sports on ESPN+. Plus. And welcome back, everybody. 316 left to play here in Clinton, Florida A&M, with a five-point lead over Presbyterian. Presbyterian will be at the line here in just a moment. And, you know, you, you look coming out of halftime, PC just one of ten fr from downtown. You think, well, how do you cut into a lead like that? Well, it's been the defense. They've held A&M to just 30% shooting in the second half, and they've been able to claw their way back into this. Yeah, no doubt. Credit them, credit the coaching staff making those adjustments. I don't know if... I'll be honest with you, I don't know if there was any personnel adjustments, but whatever they've been doing has certainly helped them get back into this basketball game. Marquise Barnett has been aggressive here in the second half, finally got into the scoring column. Corey Mincy stepping to the free throw line. He's got 10 points on the night. Freshman three been of big. six, four He's of four from big. the stripe, three of six from the floor. And again, trailing by five, a chance to cut this to a one-possession game. A&M led by 19 early in the second half. And first one rattles out. One thing's for sure, if A&M gets beat tonight, they'll know they let one get away. And second free throw for Mincy up and in. So four-point ball game. And for Presbyterian, in years past, you, you would see this team almost fold in these types of situations. But they have just stuck to their, their game plan. They battled and battled and battled. And they've made this a ball game now with just about three minutes to play. Here's Lamar out top. Bettis, he's got 20 points on the night. See, the other thing, Mincy has done a great job. It's a good contest, but a tough shot. you got to live with that. What a right, shot. That's exactly right. Well said, Alex. As Love Bettis stays hot, if that goes, it goes. He earned that. Excellent defense, there, good contest. Yeah, there's, there's no defense for that. Here's a three from the wing. Barnett gets it to go. Or excuse me, that's Harvey. Yep. Gets it to go. Big bucket. One possession game, Alex. And just like that, it's down to a three-point ball game. Love Bettis will work it up court. One of the few quality open looks that Presbyterian has gotten in this entire game, not just this half. Whoa. Stewart goes down. Looked like he may have tweaked something in the ankle calf area. Bettis again. Oh, good job by Scott getting his hand on that. Retake the possession. Harvey feeling it. 
And a whistle and a foul. That's going to go on Coffee. And that'll put the Blue Hose back at the free throw line, where so far tonight, 15 and 19, 79%. Pretty good effort, team effort, 79%. Take that just about any night, I would think. And the double bonus. Coach Harvey gets the first one to go. Coach McCullum over there with a look of concern. 155 to play. As well he should have. Big free throws right there for Jamari Harvey. We got a one point game, less than two to play. Parker across the timeline. We'll see if they go back inside to Grant. They haven't featured him as much here in the second half. But again, Scott doing a nice job defensively. Now they look to him, can't get it. Lamar attacks, left-handed wow. shot. Beautiful finish at the what basket. An athlete. Boy, he is a big-time athlete. Great finish around the rim. Left-handed, no less. And a timeout by, called by Coach Farrell. Trailing by three, 124 to play. So PC offensively, it feels like they've started to find some rhythm. They found some chinks in the armor of the A&M defense, and they got some open looks on their last handful of possessions but they've got to continue to give the effort defensively because you're right here, you got a chance to pull off an amazing comeback. But on the other end, A&M, take care of the basketball, continue to, to be aggressive on offense because you've got them in the bonus, you can get to the free throw line. Both these teams shooting extremely well from the line tonight. At, at this juncture in the game, I just don't think you need to settle for jump shots. I couldn't agree more, Alex. I would try to at least get a paint touch for the big guy, whether it's Eatman or Grant. And then you want to get that guy involved too, Harvey. If you can do like that, there's only so much you could do against that, you know. When a guy is one-on-one -on -one like that with that kind of athleticism and length and he explodes to the basket, most of the time you're going to have to foul him to keep him from getting those easy at-the-basket shots. And he's going to knock down most of those. He's this that good. Yeah, Bettis and Lamar for A&M have hit some big shots, contested shots, Absolutely. difficult shots. They found a way to get them to go here tonight. Here's Scott on the elbow. Oh, shaky Out to Mincy. pass. Cool. Dangerous pass. Mincy loses the handle. Parker on the move. Now he'll slow things down wisely and pull it back out. J.K. Parker milking that clock with Taking a three-point lead. Taking a little air out of it. Now Bettis. This Bettis and Mincy battle has been one to watch yeah, here in the second half. Special. Six to shoot. Shoot, spinning, hanging in the air. Wild circus shot, can't get it to go. Great and job by a Huge offensive rebound. Great job by a &M of getting that ball, that possession back. Do whatever you can, tip it away or whatever. That's just what they did. Just the third offensive rebound of the night for Florida A&M. Clearly the biggest one and a timeout called with nine to shoot, 29 seconds to play. And so, you know, we'll see. What do they draw up here? Well, I, I don't know, but I'll tell you this. If they win this basketball game, it's that possession right there of getting that ball back and getting you say your you're nine on the shot clock. I got to believe the ball's going to be in Bettis' hands. To, you know, they, they may choose to ice. him they may run the two-man game with like a pick and roll situation a lot of times he's been doing it off the bounce tonight but he see the immensity primarily has countered that in the second half made it a little bit tougher on him still made some big shots not as many as he made in the first half, still made some big ones, but he's had to earn it more. 
So I, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to put the ball in his hands, let him do his thing whether he uses a pick or not and we'll see if Mincy is up to the task one more time this is your ball game right here Alex I like that and, and I think if they go inside if they look for Grant try and get him a paint touch if you're Presbyterian you probably foul him immediately maybe 50 so percent free maybe throw so. shooter You still will, should have enough time to maybe go for a steal. If you don't get a steal in the first three or four seconds of play, when they inbounds it, then you foul, and you take your chances from there. Several options here. I look for maybe Mincy to try to get his mid-range jump shot off against Bettis. Boy, Bettis has done a great job. Mincy's yeah. tough to guard, and Bettis has just been really good on both ends. But Mincy has found a little wiggle room. He's made that mid-range J. I think he's probably got three or four field goals here tonight, if not more. But Bet is still doing a very good job. Let's see what happens. The officials double checking with the clock to make sure everything's right. Yeah, and I, I believe, PC, you're gonna try and get the ball in the hands of Mincy or Harvey and let them attack. And if it's not there, kick it out for the three then. Here's the handoff to Harvey over to Stewart. Back to Harvey. He will fire three. And it's off the mark. And a battle for the rebound. Barnett gets it, can't get it in. And he has it knocked away. Bettis comes down with it. And he is fouled. And AM just about four seconds away from pulling off the win. And really, I think wow. Grant coming out on the contest on the three forced Harvey to have to put oh, a little more air under it than he would like. That, that's two times defensively that Grant has done some really good things on the perimeter. And uh, maybe save the day here, or save the night, right? Yeah, the offensive rebound for, for A&M on their last possession and then the closeout there on the shooter. Yep, that's right. And it looks Great like... Job. They got a great chance to come and, away with their first and win. Presbyterian via Marquise Barnett still had great opportunity. Look at this. Here's the shot. And then the loose, and he's right there at the rim and just and then gets another chance right here and then. Shouldn't have put it down. Probably should have kicked it out to Mincy or, or another one of his teammates. Be, be sure on that dribble when you try to get out of there and get some space. But, I mean, you know, hindsight. Yeah, hindsight's 20-20. You know, no, but I, I think you're right. Perfect, After right. he missed the initial putback, probably either, at that point. Either go right back up or kick it or out Or kick somewhere. it out for a three at, at or, that point. Or, or if you are going to dribble out of there, make sure you've got some kind of space. It wasn't a whole bunch of space to work with there. But, again, Mark, uh, the, the Rattlers, the active hands on defense, Absolutely. just just Absolutely. there battling for every loose ball, for every rebound, making everything difficult Absolutely. on the Blue Hose all night long. Absolutely. And if they hang on and get this win, Coach Cullum and his team are going to have a nice trip home. Makes um, the food taste it, better. That's exactly you know, right. It makes, makes the ride not quite as bad. The, the call to the girlfriend, you know, is always better. And Bettis at the line, he's eight for eight tonight. Yeah, he needs to work on that. They did add just over half a second back on the game clock, put it to 5.3. 
That is 22 points on the night. As I mentioned, has not missed from the stripe so far. First one rattles out. Ooh. And Harvey goes down on a whistle and a foul. Lamar, yeah. And if Harvey had clear possession, he'll head to the line to shoot two. He did. He did. That is not a good foul by Lamar. As the officials I mean, over go, to the replay to check the time. Feet, but, and you yeah. want to pressure, but whew, that's a tough call, too. That is, yeah. <laughs> he's almost starting he to fall already. Over there, yeah. That is a tough call. So Harvey at the line shooting two, and with two seconds, you, you want to make one, and then you got to miss on purpose, which some people are really good at. Some people struggle at the attempted, you know, miss on purpose. It's a, it's well, a tough skill to hone. If you if you do, yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. But if you do make both, you, you, there's a chance of stealing the inbounds or fouling immediately. But there's also a chance of one of them breaking free so and you they, never catch them and, and are able to foul them. It looks like they're going to put four seconds ah, on the clock. So maybe you're right. It. So, yeah, so that changes, changes, you know, the outcome. Maybe you can make make both I in would, this scenario. I would try to make both, I believe, here. Because four is a little more uh, now. Well, now you have to miss. Yeah, you almost do, don't you? Well, I mean, it's kind of the same principle, too. If you make this then you still have a chance to steal the inbounds or foul and hope they miss. Your next foul will put A&M on the double bonus, so they would have to miss both, yeah. For all intents and purposes, miss yeah, both. Yeah. Got to hit the rim, though. And that'll be A&M basketball. Three-point lead, four seconds to go. Mincy will check back in for Presbyterian. A&M on the night, 49% from the floor, 33% from three, 81% from the strike. All those above their season averages. They yeah, come they, into a tough road environment have, and play the way that they, they have, have played tonight. They have been really good tonight. I, I look for this team to do some pretty good things this year. Tough start, but uh, good night tonight. No question. So, A&M will have the ball with four seconds to play and a three-point lead trying to hang on. And credit that coaching staff. McCullum, Coach McCullum and that coaching staff have had these guys ready. I'm telling you, I've, I've been in this building calling games now for 11 years, and uh, I, re I remember one other team coming in here um, with this kind of defensive pressure and, and very few others. Um, and this has been outstanding by, uh, by Florida A&M tonight. No yeah, question. and a credit. And, and, and Presbyterian's better than they've been, you know, so that's double credit, I guess. Double credit, you know? yeah. double credit. Yeah, yeah. Coach McCollum, you know, if you don't come out with the win here tonight and you blow a 19-point second-half lead, a lot of people outside of the locker room are going to talk about how do you lose the locker room? Are the kids looking at transferring? This team clearly wants to play for this coach. They have laid it all out on the court here tonight. They have executed at a much higher level than they have up to this point this year. And this will be a huge confidence boost if Absolutely. they can hang on in these final four Absolutely. seconds. Absolutely. Well said. They're playing for each other, playing for these coaches. The inbound to Parker, he's immediately fouled by Harvey. They run one second off the clock. And we'll head to the line to shoot two. Make one and you're out of here. You load up the bus. Quick shower and let's go eat, fellas, you know. Probably got some pizza waiting on them outside. I know, it. that's what I'm telling them. I'm saying just make one and we get cleaned up and get out of here and get some grub. Shooting two. Well, this would be a, a tough loss for Presbyterian, especially at home. You know, you never like to lose at home. The way this team got down and battled all the way back yep. to cut it to a one possession game. No quit in the blue hose tonight. The free throw's up and good, so it's a four point game. KJ Parker, one more coming up. Coach McCullum just looking at his team. Just don't foul. Just That's don't foul the shooter. 
And that will seal it. Five point lead with three and a half seconds. Reggie Miller not in the building, so I think we're okay. Yeah, yeah. Long pass up ahead is knocked away. And Florida A&M is gonna hold it for the final seconds and come away with a 65 to 60 win. Florida A&M improves to one and five on the year. Presbyterian falls to six and four. We'll have our Hercules tires strong move of the game here in just a moment. But, you know, Ken, fin final thoughts tonight. It was a great basketball great, uh, game. 40 minutes of entertainment. Yeah, I mean, we're doing a little bit of research on this team and they have been soundly beaten by, you know, probably four or five power five opponents. And you just, but when you saw them in warmups, you're like, you don't really understand that. You just thought that they would compete at a high level. That's exactly what they did on both ends. They were very, very impressive and hang on for the win. Yes, yeah, you saw Eaton there with a slam dunk on our Hercules tire strong move of the game. So Florida A&M, a 65-60 winner over Presbyterian College and a big win for that team and coaching staff as they are all small uh, smiles as they leave the court. So, Ken, that was a lot of fun here tonight. I can't wait to see you again as basketball absolutely. season continues yeah, to roll on. Pleasure was mine, Mr. Smith. That Pleasure was a lot was of mine. that sure was, was a lot of fun tonight. Big thanks to all our wonderful sponsors tonight: Hercules Tires, Sunbelt Rentals, First Citizens Bank, and Jersey Mike Subs. Again, Florida A&M comes in and gets the win. It was Love Bettis with 22 points to lead the way as the Rattlers come out on top. So that'll do it for us here in Clinton, South Carolina. Hope everybody enjoys the rest of your night. We'll see you here for more men's basketball next time on ESPN+. Plus. Home of the complete 30 for 30 library. Exclusive articles and tools. Top leagues and tournaments. Best stories in sports. On ESPN Plus. Live sports. ESPN Plus Originals. The exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library. Exclusive articles and tools. Top leagues and tournaments. Best stories in sports. On ESPN Plus. Live sports. ESPN Plus originals. The exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library. Exclusive articles and tools. Top leagues and tournaments. Best stories in sports. On ESPN Plus. Live sports.